Hello and welcome to my new video. This time it's approaching the thematic unit uh, and this one we're looking at is relationships and the family. As ever this is for AQA Religious Studies um, GCSE Specification A. Okay before I begin the video it's only fair to say that I'm only going to look, look at the four thematic units that my school has studied. Um, the other thing is that I'm only going to look at um, Christianity and Buddhism as the comparative religions. Now I suspect that most people are looking at Christianity so that's going to be appropriate for them um, but if you're not looking at Buddhism then you'll need to look at your own um, alternative comparative religion. Um, I think when we're looking at the um, role of relationships in the family to religion um, what we see is a tension over the last few years. Um, society has changed a lot of what it values um, and has significantly changed its approach to subjects such as uh, same-sex relationships. In the meantime, religions have found that quite often more difficult to deal with and I would suggest that Christianity has found it rather more difficult to deal with than Buddhism. Um, so you can see the fact that societies change quite significantly. You know, you look at simple things like emojis and you can see examples of same-sex relationships on those emojis and yet within religion they are operating to a rather strict sort of criteria um, because of the way the tradition of that religion dictates. Right, in terms of human sexuality, um, this is a significant area where Christians hold different positions. When we're talking about human sexuality, we're talking about the way in which people identify themselves as sexual beings. Um, it's quite often something that Christians don't tend to talk about, and their Christianity is of uh, sometimes seen as being uh, a little bit sort of restricted when it comes to talking about sex and uh, sexual topics. Um, in terms of key terms you've got to be familiar with, I'm really not going to explain them, um, but you should be familiar with heterosexual, in other words, uh, uh, same, sorry, straight relationships, and homosexuality, which is same-sex relationships. Okay, um, for many Christians, homosexuality is um, seen as, as quite a problematic topic. Um, the Bible actively encourages humans to increase in numbers. Um, that can be found in Genesis. Um, so right from the get-go, it basically tells you that a relationship is between a man and a woman and that their role in society is to increase in numbers in order to further the Christian faith. If you go further on in the Bible, if you look at Leviticus, um, it basically states that homosexuality is detestable and says that no man should lie with another man. Uh, on that basis, um, the Bible seems to be quite clear that homosexual relationships are something to be frowned upon. Interestingly, the Bible doesn't actually say anything about same-sex relationships between women, and so... Um, We've often seen sort of a, you know, a disparity in the law. Um, homosexuality was illegal between men in this country up until the 1950s, um, and yet um, it hasn't. Um, uh, the law didn't apply to women. Um, for Catholics, homosexuality isn't sinful. Quite a lot of people fall into the trap of saying that Catholics believe homosexuality is a sin. They don't regard it as sinful just so long as the relationship is chaste. In other words, there's no sexual contact um, between the two men. Okay, um, for many liberal Protestants though, homosexuality isn't necessarily seen as problematic. Um, the Church of England um, for example, accepts committed same-sex relationships, but doesn't sanction marriage within the church. When we turn to Buddhism, we found um, uh, you know, a much simpler uh, approach to same-sex relationships. Um, they're generally accepted, um, basically because the Buddha never gave any teachings about homosexuality. And so most Buddhists would consider that all sexual relationships should be conducted with loving kindness. And you're going to find that kind of attitude um, goes on throughout this, this topic. 
Um, I should say that as with Catholic monks and nuns, Buddhist monks and nuns also take a vow of celibacy. Um, so they agree not to have sexual relations and they refrain from sexual activity. So that's something which is quite similar, but that's only uh, in terms of those who sort of practice the religion as their day job, if you like. Okay, when we turn to marriage, um, Christians see marriage as a sacrament. They believe that it's a lifelong commitment to one another and that it's made before God. Now, the role of marriage is fairly simple. Its purpose is, is to provide a stable, loving environment for families. However, in recent years, we've also seen alternatives to marriage which have become um, increasingly popular. So things like civil partnerships, um, same-sex marriage and cohabitation. They're all alternatives and so Christians sometimes feel that the um, sanctity of marriage has come under threat from those alternatives. Uh, when we look at Buddhism and Buddhists, marriage is seen as a social contract rather than having any religious significance. And so it then becomes a matter of personal choice. Yes, you can get your marriage blessed in Buddhism, but as I say, they see that as um, something that two people might agree to. It's not necessarily something the religion says that you must do. Right then, the next topic to look at is sexual relationships before and outside of marriage. Um, again, throughout this kind of unit and throughout the, the other themes, um, there are some key phrases that you've got to uh, learn. Um, in this instance, it's sex before marriage, sex outside of marriage and adultery. So for all Christians, um, sexual relationships should take place within marriage. However, that slowly begin, you know, begun to change. And there are, you know, liberal Christians who would accept that, you know, people might not want to get married, but they might be committed to one another and therefore have a sexual relationship, which is an expression of their love um, between each other. Okay. Um, I don't think it's going to come as any surprise to say that in the case of adultery and sex outside of marriage, basically having a sexual relationship with someone who is married, um, another way of sort of, you know, using the term adultery, um, no Christians see this as acceptable. No one is going to uh, sanction adultery. Now, we've taken adultery to mean a sexual relation uh, or sexual relationship um, with someone who is married however the bible does say you know someone who looks um at another you know a man who looks at a woman in a sexual way is committing adultery um in terms of quotes you might need to remember um it's quite simple one of the ten commandments you shall not commit adultery and there's another quote which our bodies are a temple again you need to go back to your books have a look at what the um, quotes are and how you're going to use use those okay when we look at buddhism um buddhists say that sexual relationships should follow the five moral precepts uh, in other words they should be loving and kind as marriage doesn't have the same importance as it does in christianity they're not going to place the same emphasis on it um, however, in cases of adultery, most Buddhists are going to regard this as unskillful behaviour and they're going to say that it fails to show loving kindness and obviously respect for the person um, who is being cheated on. Um, so Buddhists wouldn't necessarily take the same stance as Christians, but they are going to condemn adultery as um, something that people should avoid. Um, does say, doesn't it, in the moral precepts that you should avoid sexual misconduct. OK, so when it comes to contraception and family planning, um, the Christian church has um, two very sort of different views. Um, the first thing you need to know uh, is that contraception is the method used to prevent pregnancy, and that can be natural and artificial contraception. Be careful to um, specify which one you're talking about. Um, natural contraception um, is allowed, for example, in um, the Catholic Church, whereas artificial contraception isn't. And family planning is controlling how many children a couple may have. Um, again, the Catholic Church doesn't prohibit family planning. 
Um, it just prohibits artificial contraception. And that's the same in the Orthodox Church as well. Okay. Um, in contrast, the Church of England um, accepts the use of artificial contraception. However, um, quite a few Christians would agree that some forms of contraception should not be used um, as they would regard them as a form of early abortion. Now, we don't look at abortion in this particular theme. We look at it at another theme, but it's well worth knowing what um, abortion is and obviously the uh, position of the um, Christian faith when it comes to abortion. Um, basically, Catholics, not acceptable. Um, for liberal Protestants, such as the Church of England, um, it's seen as sometimes the lesser of two evils. Okay, in the case of Buddhism, contraception, again, not seen as particularly problematic. Um, however, as with Christians, they do have um, certain misgivings. I've said problems, but I think that's probably going a little bit too far. Certain misgivings with specific types of contraception and might regard it as breaking the first moral precept. Um, unlike Christianity, though, there's no emphasis on Buddhists having children. Um, where the Bible says, um, go forth and multiply, there is no such teaching in Buddhism. And so it's a matter of personal freedom. So using contraception, um, not particularly a problem at all. OK, when it comes to divorce and remarrying, um, this again is a particularly sort of hot topic for Christians, less so for Buddhists. Um, it's fair to say that marriage is still extremely popular. Um, you can see the amount of programs to do with, you know, relationships, getting married, etc. on the TV. And it's estimated, uh, unfortunately, that 42% of marriages will end up in divorce. However, a high proportion of those people who get divorced will then go on and remarry someone else. Um, in the Bible, it says that um, divorce is not permissible. And that's certainly the case when it comes to the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church sees that marriage is an unbreakable sacrament and that, you know, when you get married, it is until death do you uh, part. Can't remember the uh, phrase until death does us part or whatever it is. Um, basically, you don't get divorced at all. Um, for Catholics, the only means of separation is through something called an annulment. Um, should be highlighted in red, apologies for that, but basically an annulment is saying that, you know, the marriage isn't legally recognised or, sorry, not recognised by the Catholic Church. Um, when it comes to other Christians, divorce and remarriage is acceptable. Um, however, you know, the person officiating that marriage, you know, making sure that the, uh, or doing the, performing the marriage ceremony, uh, will want to make sure that the marriage um, is being taken seriously and that the couple are committed and perhaps have see, uh, sought forgiveness for the failure of their previous marriage. Now, as we've already seen, Buddhists don't place an emphasis on marriage. So where people do marry, they usually do so later in life and the traditional nature um, of the societies in which um, they live often means that divorce rates are significantly lower um, than that of the UK. And again, you know, Buddhists are going to apply the concept of loving, uh, loving kindness and following the five moral precepts. So if a divorce is going to be necessary, then it's going to be to reduce the suffering of the couple. However, they would expect people to work hard to making, you know, uh, that marriage work. So when it comes to the nature and purpose of families, um, this sounds perhaps a lot more complicated than it is, but there are a number of key terms to be learned. Uh, nuclear and extended families, for example. So a nuclear family is mum, dad, couple of kids, that kind of thing. That's the sort of family that we've grown used to. However, there are also extended families, you know, families where you might live with a number of different relatives, grandparents, etc. Um, you've also got to know um, the terms polygamy, which is getting married to a number of different partners, bigamy, um, which is a crime where it's basically you 
you've got married uh, to two different people without one of them knowing. Um, it's illegal in the UK, or even if they do know, it's still illegal in the UK, and same-sex parents. Um, it's going to come as no surprise to say that both Buddhists and Christians are going to place an emphasis on having a loving, stable family, um, an environment to bring up children, and the teachings of faith within that. As we've already seen and as we've already mentioned, Buddhism doesn't place an onus on Buddhist couples to have children, but if they do, they would expect those children to be loyal, obedient, um, to practice the religion, etc. All the sort of same things that you would expect Christian families to believe in. Okay, in terms of religious quotes, one of the Ten Commandments is to honour your father and your mother. Again, it's not going to come as any surprise, but Christians who oppose same-sex marriage are also going to oppose same-sex parenting. Um, liberal Protestants, not going to uh, oppose that to any great extent, because they're going to say that the importance um, isn't necessary that a family um, comprises of a uh, man and a woman and children, um, but it should be one where children are brought up in a loving, stable environment. So again, you might want to familiarise yourselves with that, but it's not really a difficult sort of you know topic to understand. Um, in terms of gender equality, again, number of different terms to be learnt: gender prejudice, sexual stereotyping, gender discrimination, for example. Um, gender prejudice. Um, shouldn't be a surprise it's basically being prejudiced against someone for uh, you know from the point of view that they're from another um gender you know sexual stereotyping you might think i don't know you know women are good at being nurses and men should be i don't know construction workers whatever you think um and gender discrimination okay for the most part um, the more traditional you are as a Christian or Buddhist, the more likely you're going to believe that men are the head of the family whilst women provide care. However, those kind of, you know, fairly entrenched old fashioned views are slowly changing and that concept is coming under pressure and generally attitudes are improving towards that. It's still the case in the UK that women are paid less than men. Um, but, you know, hopefully that's something which, as I say, is changing over time. should say that in, in the Bible, um, that kind of, you know, gender divide um, is very much there. In Genesis, for example, God punishes Eve through the pain of childbirth and states that your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. So it's not necessarily the case in the Bible um, that it's all about equality. OK, so whilst I've said that Christianity and Buddhism tend to promote gender equality, um, this can look quite different when it comes to religious practice. Um, the Church of England, for example, has accepted women as priests since 1994 uh, and 20 years later allowed the ordination of bishops. So women can hold very high roles within the church. However, in Catholicism, that's still not allowed there is still the separation of the sexes. You know, men become priests, women become nuns. You know, men are entitled as priests uh, to officiate in church, whereas women through, you know, nuns um, tend to do sort of more caring kind of roles. In Buddhism, there's sort of a mirror of that. In, uh, in the Theravada tradition, um, there's an argument that women can't be ordained as priests. Um, it also argues that a woman must be reborn as a man to achieve enlightenment. However, you know, that again has slowly started to change. Uh, and in contrast, the current Dalai Lama has suggested um, that there is no reason why a future Dalai Lama couldn't be a woman. So you can see that whilst religions um, do promote uh, gender equality, the way the religion is practiced uh, can often look unequal. Um, as I say, hopefully this will have given you a reasonable overview of this particular topic uh, and I will be producing additional videos on the themes um, that my school has looked at over the last um, couple of years.